Good morning, everybody. Our ongoing quest for knowledge on all things decimal related continues. Welcome to Math Lesson 67. We're all about writing tenths and hundredths as decimal numbers. So the big thing to remember is you gotta know your place values. Here we have the no-name group. If we added a comma and three more digits, that would be the thousand group, right? Decimals work the same way as fractions. It's just another way to represent a number that's less than one whole. And the first place value to the right of a decimal point would be the tenths place, and the second place to the right would be the hundredths place. The trickiest part about this is reading them correctly because a lot of times kids will read it as tens and hundreds, not hundredths. So even if it's not a mixed number, you want to start a decimal number with a zero. For example, if you had 0 0.3 would be the correct way to write something that's representing three tenths. Even though you just read it as three tenths, you're not going to say zero and three tenths. So let's dive right into it right now with some examples. Here is one that's stating write three tenths as a common fraction. That terminology will sometimes mess kids up. A common fraction just means a regular fraction, not a mixed number. Don't get confused when they put this adjective common in front of it. It just means the fractions that we all know and love so well, right? So you got to write three tenths as a fraction and then as a decimal number. Well, three tenths should be pretty easy for any fifth grader. That would be how to write three tenths, right? So I'm going to end up putting three in the tenths place for the decimal and I do want to start it with a zero like we said on another page this would be the proper way to write three tenths zero point three here they're asking us to write twelve hundredths again with that adjective of common fraction just a regular old fraction so I'm going to write 12 hundredths first as a fraction. Well, 12 hundredths would look like this. 12 as the numerator, 100 as the denominator, right? To write it as a decimal number, you can only put one digit in each place. So you'd have a 1 in the tenths place and a 2 in the hundredths place. One dime and two pennies, right? That would give you 12 hundredths, but don't forget to put a zero in the ones place. Again, this is just pronounced 12 hundredths, not zero and 12 hundredths. Here they're asking us to write four and three hundredths as both a decimal number and as a mixed number. So let's do it in reverse this time. Let's write it as a decimal first. Four and three hundred. So I want a four in the ones place. And where do I want to put the three? Right here? No, that would give us four and three tenths. If I was writing it as four and three hundredths, I'd have to put my three here. And what do we do with spaces in the middle? Fill them in with zeros. Four and three hundredths. So let's go and write four and three hundredths now as a mixed number. So we've been doing that for months. Here's four. Now with a fraction, so I'm going to have three as my numerator and a hundred as my denominator, four and three hundredths. Check out this guy. A portion of this rectangle is shaded. 
name the shaded portion as both a decimal and as a fraction. Well, the first thing I better figure out is this guy's cut into how many pieces? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten separate pieces, right? So I must be dealing in tenths. And they want us to name the shaded portion. So I have ten total pieces. So I would have ten for a numerator, right? How many of those pieces are shaded? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven tenths would be shaded. That's written as the fraction. So how do I write seven tenths as a decimal? Well, if you understand your place value, here is the tenths place. You're going to just put a seven right there. But remember what we said. Start it off with a zero if you don't have anything. 0 0.7, otherwise known as 7 tenths. How about this one? We got to name the shaded portion of the rectangle as both a fraction and a decimal number. Well, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 going up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 going across. I have 10 rows of 10. That sure sounds like a 100 to me, right? So my denominator this time would be a 100. How many are shaded? 10, 20, 30. 31, 32, 33 would be my numerator. 33 hundredths written as a fraction. How are you going to write that same number as a decimal? Well, 33 hundredths, you'd have to put a 3 here in the tenth spot and end it right here on the hundredths. 33 hundredths, don't forget your zero in front of it, 0 0.33. Write this guy as a decimal number. How do you pronounce it? This sounds like 4 and 17 hundredths. So as a decimal number, you'd want 4 in the 1 spot, and you want to write 17 so it ends up on the hundredths. So 1 tenth and 17. Seven in the hundred spot. One dime and seven pennies, right? Four and seventeen hundredths. How about this one? Write them as a decimal number. Here I have nine hundredths. A little bit trickier. The nine's going to go right here. But what do I need here in the tenth spot? You better have a zero. And since there is no whole number, just write a zero right here. This is pronounced nine hundredths. Nine hundredths. We're going to go and try it the opposite way now. Write as a fraction or a mixed number. I have zero point zero. 9, right? What is the name of this number? We just got done saying on the other page, you're not going to say 0 and, going to bypass that 0 and say nothing. This says 9 hundredths. So I would just need a 9 for a numerator and a denominator of 100. Write this guy as a fraction or a mixed number. How do you say this? One and nine tenths, right? That's how to pronounce them. So how are you going to write them as a mixed number? One and nine tenths. Nine is my numerator. Ten is my denominator. One and Nine tenths. And our last one here, hopefully. How do you read this? Seven and five 
five what? Five hundredths, right? So whole number of seven, five is my numerator and my denominator would be a hundred. The trickiest part about this is making peace with your place value. Seven and five hundredths. And that is the end. You might want to open up your book for a place value chart. The actual computation, I don't even think you're going to need scratch piece of paper. Good luck on the Socrative quiz and...